Hello, good morning. I am Dr. Shilpa. So today we will be discussing about uh, normal delivery and the stages of uh, labor. So as you can see, I am holding a uterus and this is the uterus. These are the fallopian tubes and uh, these are the ovaries on either side of the uterus. So the uterus is has the body and it has the mouth. So this mouth of the uterus is called the cervix. So the uterus will be placed uh, inside the pelvis that is the lower part of the mother's abdomen and this is the uterus which will be stretching to almost like three to five times bigger than what it's normally supposed to be when the baby is reaching to a uh, around say 40 weeks of uh, pregnancy that is nine months and seven days which is the normal duration of uh, pregnancy so today's uh, topic of discussion is normal delivery. So normal delivery is a process where the baby is born through the normal passage of the mother which is called the vagina and normal delivery I think should be encouraged by all uh, the medical professionals and also by the patients to have uh, more and more natural births and also to reduce the complications of operative uh, procedures like cesarean section. So at this uh, outset, I mean, I would like to uh, tell you that the normal delivery responsibility lies with both the patients and the doctor equally. So the pa patients should be willing to go through the whole process, which is a little time consuming. It needs a lot of patience. It needs a lot of tolerance with regard to the pain. So let us see what all things happen during the normal delivery course. So this is a model which is showing a term pregnancy that is the pregnancy which has uh, reached the maturity so usually it is about nine months and seven days which is equal to 40 weeks which is equal to 280 days so this is the time that the baby spends in the mother's uh, womb and then it comes out so the process of the baby coming out into this world is called as uh, delivery and it can be either by a vaginal route that is the normal delivery or it could be through an abdominal route that is through the maternal uh, abdomen which is called the caesarean. So let us know what happens during the normal delivery. So the stages of normal delivery is divided into three. The first stage is where the mouth of the uterus opens till 10 centimeters and this process is called the cervical dilatation uh, stage so the second stage is the birthing stage where the baby's uh, head and the body comes out through the vagina and this is the uh, delivery stage so the third stage is the delivery of the placenta which is there along with the uh, baby and this has to be uh, done within a certain time frame and that is the third stage of the labor so this is the baby and uh, this is the umbilical cord and this is the placenta so as uh, you can see that the baby will usually be in a position of uh, flexion throughout the uh, pregnancy and in labor and this placenta will be attached to the wall of the uterus so i will uh, just place the baby into the uterus see with the head down see the ideal situation would be the head should be down and uh, that is when the it is easy for the delivery to happen normally so this is called normal delivery wherein there is no interference of a medical professional for the delivery and the baby comes out uh, through natural uh, passage with natural contractions and uh, without any much uh, usage of uh, medications or uh, usage of any kind of uh, instruments during the process of delivery so as you can see here that the baby's head is down uh, so first uh, the baby's head has to get engaged so this is the uh, pelvic uh, bone that is the pubic symphysis what we call if the head crosses this pelvic symphysis, pubic symphysis then we call that the head is engaged or many times i mean it is uh, also called as head is fixed so once the baby's head is uh, down so with each contraction, that is with each uh, painful contraction that the mother will have, the baby's head will start descending down. So ideally, the baby's head should be fitting into the maternal pelvis easily and it should be able to come out. So it is the proportion between the baby's head and the maternal pelvis which determines whether the patient is going to have a normal delivery or not. And this size proportionate is again 
which can be predicted by knowing the baby's weight and also by taking into consideration the patient's height, patient's weight and also other parameters uh, when we do an internal examination at around 37 to 38 weeks. Uh, so once the baby's head comes down, so as you can see here, the baby's uh, head will come down and slightly like you know once the cervix is fully dilated the baby's head will start rotating and then the baby's uh, that will be like completion of the first stage so in the second stage we give a cut into the perineum which is called episiotomy that is to distend the the diameter of the pelvic outlet and then the baby's head will be delivered first and the baby's uh, body will rotate so then the anterior, this is the shoulder delivery where the baby is first the upper shoulder will be delivered, then the lower shoulder will be delivered and the rest of the body will follow. So in this, the important thing to note is that the baby's head is the largest part of the baby and once the baby's head and the shoulder comes out, the rest of the body actually just slips out. So once this is done, we clamp uh, or we tie the cut the umbilical cord after putting two instruments on either side so that there is no blood coming out either through the baby side or through the placental side so once the baby is out once we cut the umbilical cord then the placenta will be inside and slowly with the contractions which may take about three to five minutes the placenta will be delivered so this is the completion of all the three stages of labor and after this then whatever the cut we have made on the perineum this will be stitched using uh, a suture material called vicryl or cat cut uh, once this is done we check for the bleeding from the uterus we check the mother's uh, pulse blood pressure and uh, how she is doing whether she is comfortable whether she is uh, able to speak and uh, how she is coping post delivery so also uh, we uh, call the pediatrician during delivery who takes care of the baby. The pediatrician takes a note of something called as an APGAR score which takes into account so many parameters and we expect the baby once it is born to start crying. So all this process, the crying and uh, the baby's uh, health which needs to be checked usually is checked at one minute and also at five minutes post birth to make sure that the baby is healthy. So all this process of uh, the uh, second stage, the third stage uh, will be almost over within 20 to 30 minutes. So the second stage ideally uh, that is after fully dilated cervix of 10 centimeters, it is maximum it can extend to about one hour in uh, a patient who is already delivered before or up to two hours in a first time uh, pregnant patient that is what we call it primary so the placental delivery is again we try to actively give medication during that time so that it helps in the separation of the placenta from the uterus and uh, the bleeding is reduced because of uh, this so here we give a uh, uh, the medicine called as oxytocin which is also called syntocinol which will uh, separate the placenta from the uterus and the placenta can be delivered out so this is a process of normal delivery and after this process, after one hour, we encourage the patient uh, to pass urine, we encourage the patient to eat or drink something and uh, then we shift them to the ward from the labor ward. So during this uh, whole uh, uh, process, the patient may experience excruciating pain and it depends on the threshold of the patient. So if the patient opts, then we can offer epidural analgesia which will reduce the uh, pain for the patient in active phase of labor so there is something called as latent phase of labor and active phase of labor in the first stage the latent phase of labor is when the cervix is dilated up to three centimeters and up from three centimeters till 10 centimeters it is active labor so the inactive labor the patient is supposed to be in the hospital under supervision of a birth attendant or a doctor or a, uh, the medical personnel and in this period the contractions seem to increase in the intensity and also in frequency. So the number of contractions during this 
the active or even in the latent phase sometimes is ideally should be about three contractions in 10 minutes lasting for 30 to 40 seconds which will make the baby's head come down and also this pressure of this baby on the cervix will help in the dilatation of the cervix so there could be problems in the second stage which we will discuss in the upcoming videos also i think a majority majority of the births now are under supervision in a hospital or uh, in a uh, setups where they are equipped with uh, doing a normal delivery so ideally the normal delivery rate should be more than the cesarean rate and ideally patients should be encouraged to have normal delivery as much as possible so this is about normal delivery thank you very much i will come back with more informative videos